Hello, this is Mr. Field, and this is my video on specialised animal cells. Now, before you watch this, make sure you are confident on um, the basics of animal, plant, and bacterial cells. And there's a video earlier in the playlist if you need to brush up on that. Now, in this video, we're going to quickly recap cells. Then we'll look at what we mean by specialised cells before we look at three different examples egg cells, sperm cells, and ciliated epithelial cells. So let's start by recapping our knowledge of cells. So cells are the smallest unit of living things. So they are the smallest part of a living thing that can still be considered to be alive. OK, so cells themselves are made up of smaller structures, but those themselves aren't alive. It's only when you bring them all together to produce a cell that we can consider something to be alive. Now, cells are made up of these smaller structures that we call organelles or subcellular structures. And that includes the cell membrane, which controls what enters and leaves the cell. The cytoplasm, which controls, uh, so which is where chemical reactions take place. We've got the nucleus, which contains DNA and controls the cell. The mitochondria, which release energy by aerobic respiration. We've got the ribosomes, which make proteins. We've got the cell wall, which provides strength and support for the cell. We've got the vacuole, which stores sap and supports the cell. And lastly, the chloroplasts, which are where um, photosynthesis takes place. Now, it's worth noting that these first five cell, five uh, structures are in animal and plant cells. And it's worth noting that these ones, these three, the cell wall, vacuole and chloroplasts, those are plant only. Not quite true because in bacterial cells, they have the cytoplasm, they have um, the cell membrane, they've got the ribosomes, they've got a different kind of cell wall as well. So, um, But in terms of animal and plant, we need to remind ourselves that those bottom three are only in the plant cells. Now, specialised cells. Our bodies contain about 200 different kinds of cell. Now, fortunately, you do not need to know all 200, but we are going to meet quite a few of them. And broadly speaking, we're going to see that cells can be considered to be specialised cells, which are ones with adaptations to allow them to do specific roles in the body. Now, remember, an adaptation is something like a feature. It's you know a part of the cell that is designed to do a particular role. And we've also got stem cells. So these are unspecialized cells that do not have any specific adaptations. But when they divide, that means when they multiply, they can turn into specialized cells. We'll talk a lot more about stem cells in a later video in this playlist. Now, we're going to make quite a few specialised cells. So in terms of animals, we're going to be looking at egg cells, sperm cells and ciliated epithelial cells in this presentation. But also in later videos, we'll look at nerve cells and red and white blood cells as well. Now, for plants, we're not going to look at any of these specialised cells today, but they do have their own specialised cells, which we'll meet later in the, um, in the programme. And that includes xylem cells, phloem cells, root hair cells and guard cells. OK, so the first of our specialised animal cells is the egg cell. The egg cell is the female sex cell and its job is to be fertilised by sperm as part of reproduction. Now, in terms of its adaptations, it's got four key things. The first one is its cytoplasm. Now, all cells have a cytoplasm, but the cytoplasm in an egg cell is packed with nutrients and that will enable the rapid growth of the embryo as and when that egg cell gets fertilised. It also has a cell membrane. Again, all cells do have a cell membrane. But what's special about the egg cell's membrane is that it hardens after the first sperm penetrates it to prevent further sperms from trying to fertilise the egg. This is why only one sperm can ever fertilise an egg. The next adaptation is what we call a haploid nucleus. Now, this word haploid means that the nucleus contains only half of the normal amount of DNA. What we say is it contains 23 chromosomes rather than, rather than the normal 46. Now, a chromosome 
is just a large DNA molecule, all of your cells, all of your cells contain 46 chromosomes, except for your egg or sperm cells, which are haploid, so they've only got 23. And our last adaptation is the mitochondria. Again, all animal cells have mitochondria, but egg cells have far more than usual, and that's to provide energy for the growth of the um, embryo as and when the egg cell gets fertilized. Now, our second specialized cell is the sperm cell. The sperm cell is the male sex cell, and its job is to fuse with an egg cell as part of reproduction. And we call that process fertilization. Fertilization being when a sperm cell fuses with an egg cell. Now, in terms of adaptations, the most obvious one is it's got this great big long tail that enables the sperm to swim. Now, you might have in your head some kind of image of the sperm as like a homing missile that's seeking out the egg cell. That's not what happens. What happens is millions of sperms are ejaculated into the female and they will swim up through the vagina, through the cervix, into the uterus, and they will just swim around at random. But because there are so many millions of them, eventually some of them are bound at some point to bump into the egg cell. And it's because of that tail allowing them to swim that lets some of them eventually find the egg cell. The next part we've got is called the mid piece. That's this section here. And you can see it's packed with lots and lots of mitochondria. That's to power the ta tail to enable it to swim. Then again, we've got a haploid nucleus. So again, we've only got half the normal amount of DNA, 23 chromosomes rather than 46. And that means that when the 23 chromosomes of the sperm cell fuse with the 23 chromosomes of the um, egg cell, we make a normal cell that's got the full set of 46 chromosomes. That's why half your DNA comes from your biological mother and half from your biological father. And lastly, we've got this part at the end of the sperm cell, at the very tip of it, called the acrosome. Now, that acrosome is packed with all these enzymes that help the sperm to penetrate into the egg cell during fertilization. Our last type of specialized cell we're going to look at is the ciliated epithelial cells. Now, these are cells that have small hairs called cilia that constantly waft to move mucus around. So these hairs, these cilia here, are constantly wiggling and that enables them to move mucus. Now, we find these cilia in all sorts of places in the body, but one of those places is the lungs. So we have ciliated epithelial cells in the airways in our lungs and they're constantly wafting to move mucus and any bacteria trapped in that mucus up and out of the lungs so we can see that here so this diagram here is supposed to show a small section of the airway and you can see these blobs of green nasty looking mucus um, and that might contain all sorts of bacteria trapped in that thick sticky mucus and so all of these cilia on the ciliated epithelial cells are just wiggling backwards and forwards all the time and that gradually causes the mucus blobs to move up and out so we can either cough them up and spit them out or swallow them into our stomach to destroy all those bacteria. The other place where we can often find or, or where, we, where we do find ciliated epithelial cells is in the female reproductive system. Now what we've got here just to, 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 to give a quick overview this section here is called the uterus that is where a um, embryo or a fetus will develop and here we've got the ovary or one of the ovaries where the eggs are released from and this section here is called the oviduct also known as a fallopian tube now the eggs are released from the ovary sort of here-ish and they need to get over to the uterus over there now eggs can't swim so how do they do that well the oviducts are lined with all these ciliated epithelial cells that waft the whole time to gradually waft that egg along the oviduct towards the uterus to enable um, you know, a pregnancy to take hold in the uterus uh, if that should happen. Okay, so that's it, the end. As always, thank you for listening and well done if you got this far.